so uh, dear uh, brother uh, sin christ <clears throat> so today uh, we are going to see uh, other important uh, subject uh, in the bible so last time when we studied uh, we studied about uh, the two emblems uh, which uh, christ has given us to do as a symbol uh, in this life uh, and one of them uh, was uh, you see the lord's uh, passover another thing uh, is the uh, baptism of the lord so today we are going to study about the baptism so generally uh, before uh, studying uh, what the bible says about baptism we are going to see what uh, uh, you see uh, general uh, concept of the uh, baptism is prevailing among uh, christians so generally uh, many people believe that uh, uh, you see that uh, once we leave uh, sin once we leave uh, other uh, following other gods you see once we accept jesus as a savior uh, that is the time that we need to take a baptism or else uh, you see some also still believe that uh, if they are going uh, if they are changing from one church to other church uh, you see they need to take a baptism so why baptism is so important why so much of importance is given for baptism if you see they believe that uh, if you don't take baptism then we'll be put to you see hell fire we will be you see condemned and uh, damned by the lord therefore you see uh, everybody gives very importance for the baptism so until unless uh, you are born of the water and spirit you can't enter the kingdom of heaven so you will be you see uh, sent to everlasting uh, punishment uh, in hell therefore uh, you see uh, baptism uh, this is the idea of a general baptism that is prevailing among christians uh, today therefore based on this thought only the child baptism you see uh, came into picture dear brethren so everybody uh, began to claim that if the child uh, even before coming to you see maturity if he dies uh, then what will happen uh, then uh, unnecessary you see that child uh, uh, before taking baptism uh, you see and because of the reason that he has not taken baptism uh, he will be condemned to hell fire so therefore what happened you see the brethren uh, the child baptism was invented then later on as a uh, days went on you see another picture came into existence is that uh, infant uh, baptism see uh, if a child uh, dies uh, okay uh, before baptism he will go to hell now what about the infant uh, who is just born and if he suddenly dies what happens uh, he will also go to you see hell he will also be condemned no so therefore to save that uh, innocent uh, you see infants uh, what happened was that uh, you see infant uh, baptism was uh, invented you see infant uh, baptism means uh, a child uh, when he is uh, very small you see uh, immersion is given to uh, uh, the child so because uh, you see immersion cannot be given to the child because it's too small a sprinkling uh, the baptism uh, came into the picture so this is how various types of baptism you see uh, came into the picture and uh, uh, if the child is sprinkled with baptism then who takes the responsibility of uh, nurturing the child in the path of the god so that is the time that uh, god father and god mothers uh, came into the picture and this were taken the entire responsibility of uh, nurturing the children in the path of god you see the brethren therefore you see Uh, this is the various uh, ideas uh, of uh, baptism that uh, came into picture in this world see also some people believe that we need to take baptism three times because jesus said no, to baptize in the name of the father in the name of the son and uh, in the name of the holy spirit so therefore so three times uh, baptism is required so therefore some people take uh, uh, immersion three times still many people think uh, that uh, you see for our sins to be completely cleansed we need to take a baptism seven times how as naman took uh, seven dippings in the river jordan has completely cleansed the of leprosy so many people think that uh, seven times seven immersions has to be taken okay so generally the thought is that uh, for all our past sins uh, you see uh, baptism you see is uh, required to cleanse us of thoroughly of all our sins uh, To wash out all our sins, you see, before accepting Christ, 
to wash off all the sins, uh, uh, baptism is required. Okay, we take baptism. So once we take baptism, all our sins are forgiven. All our sins are being cleansed. Okay. But after we take baptism, we sin. Isn't it? Now don't we sin? We sin. Nobody can say that uh, we don't sin at all. If we say that, uh, you see, we don't uh, sin, then uh, the Bible says that we are liars. Uh, therefore, after baptism, uh, for the sins which we commit, what about that one? Now, how do we cleanse that one? And does it mean that we need to take baptism every day? Uh, every now and then, whenever we sin? Depend on what is the real uh, meaning of baptism? You see? Read the verse. What does it say? First John, first chapter, seventh verse, brother. First John, first chapter, seventh verse. Brother, brother, good evening. Uh, you can uh, you can also read the Bible. If you have the Bible with you, you can also read the Bible in English. Okay. Uh, brother, kindly read, brother. Mouse on, brother, please. Yeah, okay, brother. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. See, the blood of Jesus cleanseth us from all sin. So, they claim that after a baptism, we accepted Christ. And Christ blood cleanses us from all sins. Dear brother, this scripture is true. The blood of Christ cleanses us from all sins. There is no doubt at all. If it is the blood of Christ, that cleanses us thoroughly of all our sins, then why take baptism, first of all? Huh? So why should we take baptism? Because it is the blood of Christ. It is the sacrifice of Christ. It is His most precious holy blood that washes us of our sins. You see, that cleanses us. It is not the water. It is not the baptism. Then why so much of importance given to the baptism? And why they start to... That baptism is the remission of sins uh, because John the Baptist, uh, you see, when he gave baptism, he mentioned uh, these words. So, many people and uh, majority of them have uh, this thought uh, in the mind because there are so many scriptures, uh, you see, uh, showing that uh, a baptism was for the repentance and for the forgiveness of their sins. Let us read the few verses, brother. Matthew 3.11 and uh, Matthew 3.6, brother. And were baptized of his in Jordan, confessing their sins. See? I, hmm. So they were, I, see, baptizing in Jordan. How? Confessing their sins. So it was based on the confession of the sins that, uh, you see, baptism was given. Next, brother, verse 13, brother, 11, sorry, verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. See, John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. So, John the Baptist, you see, the scripture is very clear that it was a repentance. Uh, it was a cleansing of the sins. Uh, by confessing the sins and showing the repentance, uh, they took uh, baptism. Even the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ, whenever they immersed, uh, you see, during the ministry of uh, Jesus, they also gave the same baptism. Let us read John 4, chapter, verses 1 to 2. Brother, brother. Can you read? If you want to read, can you read? Would you like to read? John 4, chapter 1 and 2. Uh, brother, brother, would you like to read? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm here. Okay. Brother, can you read the uh, English verse? Is it possible for you to read from the Bible? Okay. Just do it. Okay. Hmm. Okay, okay. Uh, when therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples 
then John, how Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples. Okay. His Amen. disciples also baptized many people. But observe this verse carefully. It says, Jesus himself baptized none. Why? We will see the answer today. Why did not Jesus give baptism to anybody? But the disciples gave the baptism to him, sir. Really, brethren, eh? on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 people, you see, turned to Christ. And uh, during that time also, in the day of Pentecost, uh, 3,000 people were given immersion. Why? Because uh, for the repentance, for the forgiveness of sins, confessing their sins. Read Acts of the Apostles, second chapter, verse 38, brother. What's the mother? Can you read? Yeah, okay, brother. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remissions of sin, and yeah, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay. What is it? Repent and be baptized. For the remission of sins. So this is very clear. That baptism was given for the forgiveness of sins. You see? To show repentance. That you turn to God. Hey, but then, if all the scriptures clearly prove that baptism was for forgiveness of sins. That uh, we have sinned against God. And that now we are repented. And that now we want to turn back to God. That is the reason. You see? Baptism uh, is given. Therefore, in all the scriptures, uh, it is very clear. Now, let us read uh, one verse. Let us think. Uh, then why did Jesus take baptism? If baptism was for the forgiveness of sins, then why did Jesus take baptism? Can anybody answer? Badra, yeah, Badra, Badra. He, yes, he took yeah, for our sins and for the old uh, sins, he took their place. Very good. Good answer. Boss brother, what about you? Mm, I think... <laughs> oh, it's... I'm confused, brother. Okay, mm. good. We will see the answer. Good. See, we see so many scriptures. You see... Uh, now, the question comes to our mind. And why did Jesus take baptism? If he is not a sinner, we know it. He is not a sinner. A sinner cannot redeem a sinner. He was a holy person, holy, harmless, separate from sinners, undefiled. So, Jesus is not at all a sinner. Then why did he take baptism? You see, dear brethren, this was the same question. John the Baptist asked our Lord Jesus. What was the reply of Jesus Christ? Let us read Matthew 3.15, brother. Matthew 3.15. Hmm. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so. Now for those it become us to fulfill all righteousness, then he suffered him. Ah, you see? Suddenly, when John the Baptist was giving a baptism for all the sinners, Jesus also appeared with them. And uh, he told John the Baptist to give baptism. And immediately, what did John the Baptist reply? Oh Lord, why should you take baptism? You see, read verse 14, brother, from the Bible. You have the Bible with you? Verse 14. Yeah, brother, I have. Okay. Matthew but John, 14. Mm. Yeah. But John forbid uh, 14. But John forbid him, saying, I have need I have need to be baptized for thee and connect comments though to me. Hmm? See? He said, I have need to be baptized. But uh, you are coming to me to take baptism. How is it? Why is it required? That was the question of John the Baptist. Isn't it? What did Jesus reply? Jesus did not give the explanation here, but he said, let it be so. Let it be so. What was the reason? He said, 
it become to fulfill all the righteousness uh, in god's uh, plan now, what is the god's plan what is the meaning of this baptism dear brethren the baptism of john the baptist what john the baptist gave to whom did he give we should understand first one then only we will come to know what is the meaning of a baptism which john the baptist gave and what is the meaning of baptism as per the bible you see if you read those verses clearly in matthew third chapter he clearly says that john the baptist gave baptism not for all the people he gave only for the jewish people he gave for the people of israel isn't it therefore why why did he give to the people of israel you see huh? because the people of israel god had given them the law covenant and they were all under that uh, law covenant that you have read so as the people of israel were under the law covenant uh, they were uh, you see obliged to obey god's commandment uh, but uh, none of the people could keep the god's commandment uh, they violated it uh, hence to show the repentance uh, from uh, those sins uh, against the law they had to take this baptism of immersion in water hence uh, john the baptist said uh, to the jewish people underline it not to the, all the people he said repent uh, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand read brother now matthew third chapter verse 2 matthew 3 2 hmm. and saying repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand see repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand he told to the jewish people read verse 7 and 8 is given there uh. but when he saw many of the pharisees and sadducees came to his baptism baptism he said unto them o, o generation of vipers who have one you to flee from the what to come bring forth therefore fruit meet to repentance hmm you see whom did he tell when he saw many of the pharisees the sadducees uh, come to him for baptism why did he tell them huh oh, who had shown you the way of righteousness you see huh bring forth therefore the fruits uh, for repentance that means you are coming to take baptism for repentance good now next uh, you should show the fruits the results of it uh. therefore this baptism was given to only to the jewish people not to the gentiles why because the people of israel were already baptized once uh, they came out from the uh, land of egypt as a nation they were all baptized into moses read brother first corinthians 10 chapter 1 and 2 brother brother can you read first corinthians 10 chapter 1 and 2 okay here is written moreover brethren i would not that ye uh, should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all the baptized unto moses in the cloud and in the sea amen they, amen. they were all baptized into moses you see in the cloud and sea when when they came out of the land of egypt when they crossed the red sea they were baptized into mote moses dear brethren the israel as a nation were baptized into moses and they were supposed to be obedient to the law which was god gave through moses but unfortunately none of the jewish people could remain faithful hence all were condemned as a sinners and to show their repentance the jewish people had to take this water baptism to come back to god therefore this baptism was only for the jewish people remember even apostle paul you see when he was a persecutor of the church when he turned back to jesus christ what did he do he also took the same baptism read brother matthew sorry acts of the apostles 2216 acts 2216 brother most of brother can you read Yeah, okay, and now why there is though 
Arise and be baptized and wash away the sins, calling on the name of the Lord. See? He said, huh? Baptize. Why? By washing away the sins. By calling on the name of the Lord, you get baptized and wash away all your sins. Therefore, Apostle Paul also took the same baptism. This was applicable only to the Jewish people till a particular time. What was a particular time? That particular time was a 70 week of special favor given to the Jewish people. We are going to study about this uh, 70 week prophecy, God willing, in the coming classes. This is mentioned to us in Daniel 9 chapter. Okay? The Jewish people were given a 70 week special fever. Say, special favor. So, in the 70 week special favor, the gospel was supposed to be preached only to the Jewish people. And after the 70 weeks only, the good news was supposed to go to the Gentiles. Hence, you remember, when uh, Jesus preached, he never preached to the Gentiles. He preached only to the Jewish people. And we sent uh, he had, uh, disciples. When he sent the disciples, 70 people, two by two, what did he command them? He commanded, go not into the way of the Gentiles. But go to the land of Judea and preach the gospel. So, this uh, special time was allotted only to the Jewish people. Hence, uh, it was necessary that the Jewish people to show their repentance and uh, that they're coming back to God, they needed uh, to, you see, take uh, this baptism. Therefore, this is applicable only to the, you see, Jewish people. But when this 70 weeks favor ended, what happened? The gospel, the good news began to be preached to the Gentiles as well. Read, brother. Acts 13, 46 and Acts 15, 14. Brother, brother, can you read? Uh, brother, brother, you are there? Yes, it is written. Uh, first of all, Acts 13, 46. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, it was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, but seeing ye put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of uh, everlasting life, lo, we turn to the Gentiles. See? Then Act 15. First, uh, first, it was necessary to be preached to you, to the Jewish people. Because you are counted unworthy, because you have put out the gospel from you, we are turning to the Gentiles. When did they turn? Did they turn immediately as soon as Jesus died on the cross? No. After three and a half years of his death. Uh, now read with that. Acts 15, 14, brother. Huh? Okay, then uh, 15, 15, 14, 14. Here is done. Uh, Simon had declared how God at the first did visit the Gentiles to take out of them a people, a people for his name. See, how did God first visit the Gentiles? After giving favor to the Jews, when they rejected, God turned to the Gentiles. Dear brethren, you know, how is it like this? Uh, it is like a olive tree. You see, the people of Israel are compared to olive tree, natural olive tree. Okay? But uh, God... Uh, expected a uh, good fruits from this uh, olive tree, you see, from the nation of Israel. But uh, the nation of Israel did not give any fruits of the Holy Spirit. Uh, olive means olive oil, the Holy Spirit. Uh, they did not give any, you see, fruits of the Spirit. Uh, huh? You see, therefore, what did happen? Uh, so God turned uh, to the Gentiles. So those branches uh, which did not show the actual faith uh, on God, they were cut off. They were broken off. Now there is space, you see, in this tree. Correct? There is space in this tree. Now, who has, who, who are, uh, you see, huh? brought here? You see? Huh? Let us read the verse for that. Romans 11 chapter, 17 and 20. Brother. Romans 11 chapter, verses 17 and verses 20. Ah. Most of the reader. And if some of 
the branches be broken off and though being a wild olive tree what grafted in among them and with them partakest for the root and fatness of the olive tree well because of unbelief they were broken off and though standard by faith be not high minded but fear see the jewish people were broken off why because of unbelief they did not have faith now apart from this there is other uh, olive tree also it seems sir. that is called as wild olive tree that's what verse 17 says no? wild olive tree now these are the gentiles so these have never come to the picture of, of god so what happened just because some branches have been broken off there was some space for the you see wild olive trees to be grafted uh, in the good olive tree uh, two trees you see got it a picture uh, there are two trees uh, see you can observe here natural olive tree is a people of israel wild olive tree is the gentiles some of the israel people were cut off from the favor of god because they did not have faith but uh, some people in the wild olive tree they had faith on god you see they had faith of abraham now what did god do god plucked from the wild olive tree and grafted in the natural olive tree this is how the gentiles that means we all came into relationship with the god of israel we pray now the god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob how are we related to it this is how we were related to abraham we have been grafted into christ now you tell me huh? where we baptized into moses no we were never baptized into moses we were never under the law did god give the law to us no we were never under the law and god never gave us the law and we were never baptized into moses if we were baptized into moses if we were under the law then really the baptism of repentance of john the baptist would be applicable to us but as we are not the jewish people we are the gentiles this baptism of repentance is never applicable to us at all then what is the real meaning of baptism for the gentiles for the god's chosen people what is the real meaning of baptism this one apostle paul clearly explains to us in roman 6 chapter you see roman 6 chapter apostle paul is writing to the people and the christians in rome he is not writing to the jews underline it he is writing to the roman people the christians who are living where in rome he is telling to them the real meaning of baptism that it is not for the remission of sins the actual meaning here apostle paul shares with us read brother roman 6 chapter verses 3 4 and 5 brother huh? now no you not that so many of us were baptized into jesus christ were baptized in his death ah Therefore, wait brother wait 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 see what did he say here only the real meaning is given there you see don't you know huh, that as many of us were baptized into jesus christ were baptized into water not baptized into water did you observe he says water baptism Baptist. no he says baptized into his death that means the real meaning of baptism means baptizing into the death of christ now we will think what is the meaning of uh, baptizing into the death of christ huh? correct no let us read on verse brother to understand this one psalms 82 verse 6 and 7 can anybody read brother brother okay uh i have to read uh, rom or psalm. psalms 82 6 and 7 brother okay it is written i have said i 
uh, our gods and all of you are uh, children of the Most High, but ye shall die like men and fall like one of the pri princes. Very good. He says, you are all the children of God. We are all the sons of God. Correct, no? As we accepted Christ, what happened? We have become the sons of God. It also says, though you are the children of God, though you are the sons of God, how shall we die? We shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Now, who is this one of the princess? One of the princess means multiple, not singular. That means there must be two princes. Now, if you check in the Bible, who are the two princes in the Bible? If you see, the first prince was Adam. He was created as the king of this earth. Daniel, second chapter, seven chapter subject. You remember now? If you don't remember, kindly see the YouTube link. God created Adam in his own image, gave him the entire dominion of the earth. So he is the first prince of this earth. He is the first king of this earth, but he lost the kingdom because of sin. Okay? So there is the other king, other prince of this earth. This is none other than our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, Jesus is called as second Adam. Correct? No? We know all these things. I am not going to show the scriptures because I hope you know all these things because you listen to the basic classes. Okay, now brother, most of brother, you know that verse now? Yeah, brother, I know. Okay, good. Okay. So, Adam was called as the first Adam. Jesus is called as the second Adam. So, there are two Adams. That means there are two kings of this earth. Now, you tell me, these both kings died. Correct, no? Now, you tell me, why did Adam die? Can anybody tell me? Why did Adam die? Be because of his sin. Very good, brother. Because of his sin. Good. Adam died as a sinner. Okay. Now, why did Jesus die? Because of our sin. Very good. He died for a sinner. You see? Dying as a sinner and dying for a sinner, there is difference. This is the difference between the death of Adam and death of Lord Jesus Christ. What does Romans 6.3 say? That you are baptizing into his death means what type of death did Jesus die? Jesus died a sacrificial death. He voluntarily died on the cross. This is the actual death that Jesus observed on the cross. So, when Jesus was baptizing, what was his heart condition? What was his thoughts? It is given in the Bible. Read Hebrews 10 7, brother. Hebrews 10 7. Hmm. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do their will, O Lord. You see? He said, huh? Lo, I come in the volume of book. It is written of me to do thy will, O God. Jesus. When he came to Jordan to be baptized, what was his heart condition? Lord, I'm coming to do thy will. What was the will of God? If you read one verses before and after, it says, the sacrifice of bull and goats you don't desire, but you have prepared a body for me to come and offer it as a sacrifice, a redemption for Adam, to ransom him from the grave. You see, this is the sacrificial death what Jesus was actually taking in the river Jordan. This is the real meaning of baptism. Therefore, you see, what is the meaning of baptism? Don't you know that as many are baptized into Christ, are baptized into his death means sacrificial death. Most of you remember now, we studied the subject about church. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Yeah, we should. Yes. Who is the church? Is it the believers or is it the followers? If you see, who is the real church? Is it the believers or followers? Followers. Followers. What is the difference between believers and followers? If you see, believers believe, but followers sacrifice. Follow. Voluntarily yeah. offer themselves as a sacrifice. This is the real meaning of baptism. Read Colossians 3 3, brother, and uh, Galatians 2 20. Brother, brother. Uh, are you there? Can you read? Okay. Uh, Galatians 2.20, right? Uh, 
Colossians 3 3 first, then okay. Galatians 2 20. Okay. Uh, for ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. See, you are dead. That is the meaning of uh, death in Christ. You are baptizing into his death means that is the meaning. You are dead. You are dead to the world. And your life is hid in Christ with God. That is the meaning of baptism. Read with that. Galatians 2.20 with that. Huh? Okay. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not uh, I, but Christ lived in me and the life which I now live in the flesh. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Well, what did Apostle Paul say? I am crucified with Christ. I am not living. It is Christ that lives in me. I am no longer living. I am crucified. As Christ was crucified on the cross, I am also crucified. I am laying down my life completely. This is the real meaning of baptism. Therefore, you see, remember the... the what did Jesus said to the disciples? He said one beautiful word. He said, I have a baptism to be baptized. You see, how am I straightened till I accomplish it? Read Luke 1250 with her. Luke 12, chapter 50. Luke 12, chapter 50. Okay. Anybody read? Huh? Yeah, brother, go on. Okay, it is written. But I have a baptized, but I have a baptism to be baptized with. And how am I strengthened uh, till it be accomplished? See, Jesus was actually not speaking about little water baptism. He had already taken, but he was speaking about the baptism of his death, which began at Jordan. So, what baptism he took at Jordan was just a symbol. Actual baptism was to be fulfilled in his life when? when he was supposed to really die on the cross. This is the meaning of baptism. Therefore, you see, uh, Jesus had two disciples, John and James. You know, what did they do? They sent uh, his mother to ask uh, Jesus' uh, uh, permission for the two sons to sit on one on the left hand, other on the right hand. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, you don't know what you're asking. It is not in my permission to give you the choice to sit on the left hand and the right hand, but it is there with my God's power. But uh, if you want to see it, then what you have to do? You have to drink of the same cup which I drink. You have to be baptized with the same baptism. I am baptizing it. Correct? Huh? Read Mark 10 chapter. Verse 35 to 38. Uh, Moshe, brother, can you read? Uh, okay, brother. And, and, and James and John, the son of Zebedee, come unto him, saying, Master, we would that thou shouldest do for us whatever we shall desire. And he said unto them, What would you that I should do for you? Then said unto him, Grant us unto us that we may sit one on the right hand and the other on the left hand in the glory. But Jesus said unto them, You know not what you ask. Can you drink of the cough that I drink of and be baptized with the baptism that I, I am baptized with? See, we already studied in the previous class about the cup. What is the meaning of the cup? the wine and the bread, you see? And uh, baptism is saying, uh, why is it so difficult to be baptized the same way Jesus was baptized? Disciples gave the water baptism to so many people. Then what was so difficult for them to take baptism again? Jesus was not speaking about literal water baptism. He was speaking about the baptism into his death, the sacrificial death. He said, it is possible to Sit on the throne only if you die a sacrificial death. To if you immerse yourself into my death. This is the real meaning of baptism. Therefore, you see, what baptism Jesus was taking, 
what baptism actually John the Baptist was giving was totally different. You see, John the Baptist was giving the baptism for sinners for repentance. But suddenly when Jesus came before him, John the Baptist was totally shocked and surprised. You see, what did he say? Huh? Read. Now let us read the verse. We will clearly understand now. Matthew 3rd chapter, brother. 13 to 15, brother. Read. Huh? Then come Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized, baptized of to be baptized of him, but Jesus for, forbade him saying, uh, I have, but, but John forbade him saying, hmm. him saying, I have need to be baptized for the and come though to me. And uh, Jesus wait, answering, brother. wait, 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 brother. Now let us understand this first. It says, Jesus was coming for baptism, but John the Baptist stopped him. He said, no, 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 don't come. Wait, wait. Why are you coming to get baptized? Actually, I should take baptism from you. Why are you taking baptism from me? Why did John the Baptist mention these words? Because John the Baptist clearly knew that Jesus was the Messiah. Correct, no? John the Baptist yeah. clearly, no, no. He clearly knew. When the Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove, he clearly understood that this is the Son of God. He said, no. Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh over the sins of the whole world. He knew it. How did he knew? Because both were cousins. Huh? Correct, no? Who is the elder brother? Of, uh, who is the elder brother among Jesus and John the Baptist? John. Very good. So, John was six months older than Jesus Christ. <laughs> when Mary came to meet Elizabeth, what happened? John the Baptist rejoiced in the womb of Elizabeth, uh, seeing Jesus in the womb of uh, Mary. So, both have that correction. Both are cousin brothers. Sir. And he knew very clearly that Jesus is not a sinner. He is born and begotten by the Holy Spirit of God. He is the son of God. He clearly knew. So, how can a holy person come to take baptism of repentance for forgiveness of sins when he doesn't have any sin at all? He was shocked. Therefore, he said, wait. He stopped him. Don't come. Actually, I should take. Why I should take? I am a sinner like the rest of the people. I can take it from you. But why are you coming and taking it? Isn't it? That's the reason John the Baptist stopped it. Now, what was the reply that Jesus gave? Continue with it. Now, read the reply of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus answering said, uh, Suffer it to be so. Uh, now, for wait, those wait, wait. He said, suffer it to be so now. Allow it now. Don't disturb it. Why? Why did not uh, Jesus sit there and give a complete explanation, a beautiful subject about baptism to John the Baptist? Because even if he would have told everything in detail to John the Baptist, he would have never understood it. Why? So many big crowd are there. In front of everybody, if Jesus tells or keeps on correcting John the Baptist in front of everybody, everybody's mind will get first of all disturbed. And John the Baptist would never really understand the real meaning of it because there were so many details was there. Therefore, in short, he said, suffer it to be. Allow it to be now. Because by doing that, what am I doing? He continues to say, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. There is something in God's plan which I can't explain to you right now. It will take time, but allow it. Therefore, what did John the Baptist do? He gave baptism to Jesus Christ. Later on, he said, I have a baptism to be baptized with. That is the death. How am I in great difficulty till I accomplish it? Therefore, the baptism which Jesus took. And the baptism with John of took was totally different here, brethren. The real meaning of baptism is given in 1 Peter 3.21. It's given in Romans 6, chapter 3rd verse. Now read 1 Peter 3.21. What is the meaning of baptism? Read, brother. Brother, brother, can you read 1 Peter 3.21? 
Okay, it is written like this. The like figure where onto the baptism though also now save us uh, not the putting away of the fifth of the place but Wait, the answer see, of see? Uh, one minute it says baptism is not the putting away the filth of the flesh clearly underline it it is not for the forgiveness of sins no we receive forgiveness of sins only by the blood of Christ without Jesus blood we can never receive forgiveness. It's not baptism. Underline it. See, it clearly says, baptism is not putting away the filth of the flesh. You may immerse yourself thousand times in water without his proper understanding. It is of no use. It is like a, taking a dip in a swimming pool. Dear brother, what is the meaning of the baptism? It is not for the filth of the flesh. It is not to cleanse your sins. No. Then what is the meaning of baptism? Continue with the brother. brother. Huh? Uh, but the answer of a good conscience to our God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It is a good conscience. Answer of a good conscience towards God. Lord, you have done so many things to me. What can I do to you? What little can I do to you, God? I offer myself as a living sacrifice to you. That is the real meaning of good conscience. Answer of a good conscience. Realizing the benefits and the mercy and the grace of God. That we lay down our life for, for Christ's sake. What did Jesus say in Matthew 16, 24? If any man wants to be my disciple, what he should do? Tell me. Master brother, tell me. What he should do? Brother, brother, tell me. The disciples of Jesus Christ, what is the condition? Huh? Okay, read. Read from the Bible. Matthew 16, 24, brother. Huh? Do you have the Bible? Can you read it? Brothers, you are there online? Brother, brother, Muslim brother? Uh, brother, yeah. Actually, that my phone, my mute. I was speaking, but it was mute. Sorry, brother. Uh, 16, 24, right? Uh, read, brother. Mm. What is the condition of discipleship? Uh. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny, deny his himself and take up his cross and follow me. Uh, this is the condition. What did Jesus say? Deny yourself. That is the meaning of uh, what, what we do in uh, immersion. We come inside the water, lay back. Deny yourself. Can anybody uh, no. die? Or fall backwards in the water, it is like almost dying. A feeling of death. That is what Jesus said. Deny yourself. Then, next brother. Huh? 25 also, brother. Continue. What is the first condition? Deny yourself. Huh? Deny himself and take up his cross and follow ah, me. Take up his cross. Rising again from the water. Taking responsibility for Christ's sake. What is the meaning of taking the cross? We have seen the subject, huh? not literal cross. Taking risk, taking responsibilities, laying down ourselves for sacrifice. How? Following the footsteps of Jesus. This is the real meaning of baptism. Therefore, you know what happened? In the early church, there was a confusion regarding this baptism. Many people are taken without their understanding the baptism of repentance. John the Baptist's baptism, Apostle Paul came to them and corrected them and rebaptized them into Christ. Let us read that incident. Acts 19, chapter verses 1, 2, and 3. Brother, brother, you are there? Yes, I am here. Okay. Can you read Acts 19, chapter 1, 2, and 3? Okay. Uh, it is written. And it came to pass that while a close was at a at uh, Corin Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believe? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, 
unto what then were he baptized? And they said, unto John's baptism. Oh. Then said Paul, uh, oh. John, uh, verily uh, baptized with the baptism of repentance, oh. saying unto oh. the people that they should believe on him, oh. which should come after him, oh. that is, on Christ Jesus. Oh. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Uh, see, they were baptized in the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Why? They have already taken baptism, no? That is not sufficient. They are taken in a wrong understanding. They are taken it for the repentance, for the forgiveness of sins. He corrects them. And they again took baptism into Christ. Understood? Dear brethren, this is written to the, huh? you see, the church at Ephesus, they are not uh, Jews, they are Gentiles. Therefore, what did Jesus say? Huh? Go to all nations, end of the earth, and preach the gospel and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. What is the meaning in this name of Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost? If you see all the incidents, none of the apostles use these words. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. But they baptized into Christ. Then what is the meaning of this? Sir? Name of the Father, Son, and the Ghost. Name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit. Name of God, you see, God, Almighty God. Name of Jesus, sir. Son means Jesus. Sir. Name of the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. So what is the meaning of uh, baptizing into their name? See, what is the meaning of name in the Bible? We have studied, now How to study the Bible? Huh? How do we study the Bible? Here a little? Huh? Awesome, brother. How do we study the Bible? Here a little? Huh? Here, Dear here little. a little? Here a little. Isaiah 28, 18. Here a little? Here a little. That is how we read the Bible. And for the Bible, Bible is the dictionary. We need to see what is the meaning of name in the Bible. You see, for example, if I say Robin is not good, what is the meaning of it? Tell me, if I say Robin is not good, what is the meaning of it? Does it mean that the spelling Robin is not correct? Mm, I think uh, is uh, it have Full form. Huh? Robin. Robin is somebody's name. Correct, no? Oh. Huh? Mm. Correct, no? So, no, no, no I'll, I'll give my example. Only. If I tell Raju is not good, what is the meaning of it? Does it mean that uh, my spelling, there is any mistake? No. Then what does it mean? Correct. You told it's correct. What is the answer? What is the correct meaning of it? The person is not good. Very good. That means it's not speaking about the spelling at all. It is speaking about the character. So name actually in the Bible means character. Now you tell me, what is the name of uh, huh? Jesus? What is the meaning of Jesus? You tell me. Mm, Jesus. Uh, also, it's a character. He, um, Correct. Jesus what is the meaning? Many fluent characters. Uh, uh, meaning. Uh, meaning. Uh, uh, um. Brother, tell me, what is the meaning of the word Jesus? Uh, he is the son of God. Uh, from the Bible, you tell me. From the Bible, from the scriptures. Okay. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue, both of you. Okay. Uh, it is, starts from S, yes, word S. Yes. Jesus Salvation. He is the word... Salvation. Salvation. Savior. Very good. World oh, yeah. Savior. So Jesus means Savior in the Bible. Okay. Let me tell me what is the meaning of Emmanuel? Emmanuel is God with us. Very good. See, that's the character. Character means God is with us. That signifies his character. That how he is with us. He signifies yeah. that he is a Savior. Therefore, in the Bible, the name means actually the character. Therefore, immersing somebody into the name of the Father, name of the Son, name of the Holy Spirit means give them a clear understanding what it actually means in the Bible. It speaks mm -hmm. of the character. 
we should be immersed completely in the character of Christ. That is the real meaning of baptism. Not just taking water baptism and living a worldly life. But our character should be completely dissolved in Christ. Correct? Huh? What did Jesus say? Until you eat my bread, until you eat my flesh, drink my blood, you have no life. What is the meaning of eating and drinking blood and bread? Huh? Flesh. Not literal. Assimilating his character in us. Okay? So this is the real meaning of baptism in the Bible. Hope you understood. Any questions? Any doubts, brother? No, brother. It's so clear. Okay. Brother, brother, any questions? No. Okay. I'll send uh, 